Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Alexander Ilchuk and I'm greeting you on behalf of the 2025 initiative. Today is a special webinar as we are working within the energies of the Vesak Festival. And before we start our work today, let's have a short alignment. So let's connect with our own soul. And we visualize a circle of people coming now for this webinar, joining from around the world. And see the souls as sparks of light gathering together in a beautiful network of light. Covering the entire planet. And we realize ourselves as members of the new group of world servers. And we extend our alignment, joining with men and women of goodwill around the world, consciously or unconsciously working for the same purpose of helping to prepare the way for the externalization of the hierarchy and reappearance of the Christ. And together we read the mantra of the new group of world servers. May the power of one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness and the right speech. So, welcome everyone. Today our webinar is different from all other webinars that we uh, have every month in this uh, solar festivals. Today at the time of the Vesak, we come together to sound the collective Vesak invocation, invoking the higher 
energies, the higher forces, to assist humanity in its transition through the burning grounds of today's crisis. Today we have representatives of the six continents coming together to sound the note of their land, their continent, reflecting on the needs of humanity as it's, it's perceived from their part of the world. Humanity as a disciple is entering the, onto the Taurus sign as it's set in the esoteric astrology. And it's a, a sign of alignment, uh, enlightenment. But also it's the sign which works with the energy the same as in Scorpio, where the world disciple, Hercules, been struggling with the Hydra, lifting the Hydra to the light. And so today it's the task of humanity and us as disciples to help humanity in this process, to lift the world hydra into the light. And today we reflect together, we will reflect together on one of the seed thoughts of Taurus, the penetrating light of the path. And all the panel has been asked to reflect on this seed thought and to share today with us. And so our work today will be that for the next hour, or half an hour to 40 minutes, we will link with different continents, with our panelists from different continents, listening to their reflections, tuning with them. Then we will have some time for sharing where we will invite anyone who would like to contribute to this sharing to bring your impressions to the collective chalice. And then we will have a meditation, collective meditation. And so I invite to the panel uh, our first um, representative. And originally it's supposed to be uh, Karen Berenship from Africa. I'm not sure if Karen, you online. because we, uh, there was some technical problem. So I suggest we then start with uh, our panelists. Alexander, from, can you uh, hear me? From Are, Karen can you hear me? Yeah, Karen yes. is. Alexander. Karen is on. Great, thank you. Thank you, Karen. So I will uh, then pass the microphone to you and the floor is yours. Alexander, thank you so much for the beautiful energy that you brought to this call and greetings to all my beloved fellow brothers and sisters around the world. It is a deep privilege to be on the call this evening under this glorious Wissak moon. I represent Africa here this evening and, well, it's evening where I am. It might be morning where you are. But to take a moment to just be quiet and have a moment of stillness and to consider the continent of Africa, the land of Ubuntu, the land of Mandela, and just to give ourselves a moment to tune into this, what has been known as the dark continent for such a long time. And I have some perspectives to share with you a little bit later on that. But for now, let us just be silent.
Thank you. As Alexander called on us and I believe was in divine inspired to share with us on the penetrating light of the path, there is a deep sense from Africa of a call to unify. There has been on the planet, continues to be this isolation of nations and of many migrants moving to Europe and other countries from Africa and within Africa the energies of tribalism which is challenging and causing much disunity. And in the meditation for me some of the reflections that came is that this is a time of deep challenge for us right now even under the Scorpio moon and we're being called to consider as disciples what is it that unifies us reaching out to find the common ground amongst us all and to reach beyond race, color, creed and to see for example as Africa is something that is less than possibly than other places or other countries and to begin to recognize the points of light that are beginning to pop up everywhere in Africa. More and more the work is being seen to be done in Africa under different names, under different banners and yet it is indeed the work. And another reflection that came to me was as education was unheard of over a hundred years ago for many people, it was out of reach for many people and yet today education is available to most people, still not all, but to most people and governments have departments and have money allocated to education. And so it seems now that there is a time for Africa to rise in its economic sense, for it not to be exploited as it has been, plundered, but rather that it is seen as a point of deep resource to help heal and restore and replenish this beloved mother planet Earth and the light that is beginning to penetrate the darkness and bring rise to the great minds and resources that are here to also bring to awareness the new energy and technology, this clean energy and technology that can be accessed not just for Africa but for everyone. As we contemplate 2025, there are already many people in Africa looking at 2063 and saying where will we be then? So it's almost as though the message for 2025 has begun to penetrate and already enter the consciousnesses of some people beginning to build and bring awareness and call on Africa to rise, rise in her glory. And as a disciple and as a disciple that I share work with here in I'm in the city of Cape Town and in other points within southern Africa and even in northern Africa, on the Horn of Africa, I have become aware of the deep triangle that is forming on Africa and its triangle is reaching out to the other continents. The hierarchy is manifesting more and more clearly in Africa. The legacy of Mandela the legacy of Ubuntu, seeing and being to another person as you want to be to yourself, not only a golden rule statement, but Ubuntu is also a sense of common legacy. It is said that Mandela brought us peace, but that he didn't bring us justice. And there is a call, a clamoring for justice. And we call for the light to bring us justice in Africa to bring light that binds us all as the one humanity that we truly are. Thank you. Alexander, over to you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.
I suggest we have a short pause to reflect. And now we, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Eliyahu Uli from Jerusalem, Israel, to share his impressions on behalf of the Asian continent. Who, uh, I think you are muted. Just hold on a second. We will find to unmute you. Uh, hello, Alexander. And hello, hello. everyone. Uh, this Hi, this is a great privilege, and um, and it's a great privilege to be in the company of uh, of such uh, light workers as I understand are joining us. So, okay, um, well, I live in a very hot spot in the whole world. Um, you, and many people uh, will say that it's. Uh, Jerusalem is is the linchpin for world peace, and well, this is what it says in um, in the Bible. Of course, it says um, the city of peace, which is far from it today, but one day it will be. And also the keys of Enoch. Many books, many prophetic channel works talk about um, Jerusalem being a big, big key for the world. And, and we see that it's a um, center for the three great monotheistic religions. And the fighting uh, is around Jerusalem so much. And um, so I am connected with a wonderful group uh, of uh, Middle East uh, peace meditators led by Uta Gabay. And, uh, and we send love and light and spiritual force. Uh, first, to Jerusalem, understanding what a key and linchpin it is, and then to the rest of Israel, Palestine, and then uh, to around the world, and we do it every Monday night, and it is a joyful, powerful work. And um, okay, so uh, I have an unusual background. Um, I was a, a zealot. In my younger days, I was a Jewish uh, fundamentalist, and uh, and I've been uh, and so because when I was young, I was a fundamentalist and quite a militant. I understand uh, fundamentalism. I understand in all forms the Muslim and the Jewish form and all all of the. I have a, I have a good feel for it because I lived it. And um, I understand the glamour uh, of the for the fundamentalists, and I understand what a trap it is, and um, and I can feel sympathy for the um, for the very very dangerous fundamentalists on uh, all sides, and um, and uh, what we need to do as a world. Is to um, is to stand up against it, to sympathize, yes, um, but to but to speak out against it. And um, so I once had an interesting meeting 
with a member who was uh, a, an Arab man who was a um, uh, in his younger days in a very radical group in the PLO called the Popular Front for the for the Liberation of Palestine, and he had changed, and I had changed, and a friend of mine brought him to meet me, and you know it was one of the best meetings of my life because. Having been there, we had something in common. And at a certain point in our conversation, he asked me, he said to me, but, but you want to take over the Al-Aqsa Mosque, don't you? You want to turn it into a Jewish temple again. And uh, my honest answer to him was, no, I don't. And then when he heard me say that, um, the, the tension just disappeared. And um, and I think the Temple Mount is such a key. And for um, I'm a, a big admirer of um, of a channeled work from a man from an angelic being called Cryon. And Cryon says that um, the Temple Mount will be a peace park. And um, and eventually Jerusalem will be an international city of peace and, and a peace park. And I believe this will happen, that, that these things are on the way. It's not only a me who's saying this. And, um, and I believe the future is light. And, um, and so for my minute of silence, I would like to take all of us to the time and the space, let's, let's go out of our linear time uh, that we think we're in right now because in reality there is no time and there is no space and this future of the United Jerusalem, uh, in some level it already exists. So I would like to suggest to all of us that we close our eyes and we, we go in our light bodies to that to that time and that place where it's already done where the Jews and Arabs have made peace here and the Temple Mount and Jerusalem are parks of peace so let's go and just feel that in our bodies it's very very key to be able to feel it in our bodies to go to to that reality existing now and just feel what a release it is to be in that world, that earth where this has been solved and where people could love each other in this part of the world and forget about the old, the old hatreds and the old structures. Pen the penetrating path of light for the Middle East and also for Asia. It means that these old ancient structures of religion must change. Let them, they will still exist. They will still exist and the cultures will maintain their beauty and what they have to offer. But it will moderate Islam and Judaism and the Brahmin system in India 
and the communist system in China, all of these systems must change. They must soften. And all of that is in the process right now. And the younger generation coming in are higher souls. They are indigo, indigo children and high-level beings, and they are changing it. And as time goes on, it will change more and more just because of generational change. The younger ones are tired of the conflicts, and the whole world is tired of these conflicts. And and we are doing the work and we are helping with our meditations and our work. So thank you very, very much. It's a great privilege. God bless you all. Alexander, over to you. Thank you very much, Eliyahu. Just have this Point of silence altogether. And now let's move, you know, in a focus to Australia. And I'm happy to introduce Wendy Paulson and Judy Norman from Sydney, Australia. Hello, everyone. Our dear friends in the work. <clears throat> Thank you for the privilege <clears throat> of sharing with you um, in this rather inspiring webinar. And Wendy and I wish you all an inspiring WESEC. It's certainly been a powerful one so far. So, to Australia. Well, once upon a time, there were land bridges connecting Australia with the other continents. But today, it is the world's largest island. Its landmass is almost as large as Europe, but the population is mostly scattered around the rim, not too far from the wide embrace of the oceans and beaches. Yet at the centre of Australia, at its heart, is a great monolith, an enormous red rock which the first peoples of the land call Uluru. It is surrounded by a vast flat plain and that mighty heart at the centre connects us all across vast distances. It sounds a powerfully magnetic call. It is both an actuality and a symbol for the impulse under which we work as we transition from a civilization built through the rational mind to the new emerging civilization of the heart. Once connected physically to the rest of the world, then isolated as an island, Australia is now able on a higher turn of the path of humanity to reconnect directly heart to heart, hearts across distance, through the wonders of the internet which is one of the gifts of the inspired rational mind. And so we participate together as the one world community in radiating the penetrating light of the path. An essential element of what humanity needs today, and hence what is needed by our brothers in all the kingdoms in nature, in the mineral, vegetable and animal kingdoms, is the strengthening of the impulse in the heart where we are told the unification of the worlds resides. And so we work to open a door into the new civilization of the heart, enabling its light to penetrate through the thickening fog of the dying moments of the passing age, and so reveal the path into the next great advance as we begin the return to the true heart we share. 
there is a great rhythmic pulse in this from land bridge to Ireland and returning to interconnection through the heart from oneness to separation to oneness in its subtler synthesizing sense it is a great breath manifesting continent-wide ten years ago Wendy and I visited Uluru and there we experienced the deep and vast spiritual energy of this great manifestation and experienced it powerfully in the heart then while on a day trip to other formations of interest a voice sounded in mind these words these are my landmarks through these centers I breathe you into my being and in the light of these words we'd like to invite everyone to participate in a micro meditation breathing through whichever landmarks hold the essential energy of your continent. We have been inspired by a verse in Agni Yoga which refers to the power of a super mundane breath where we are revitalized when we pause to inhale one breath from the deepest level of our being. I'll read the verse first and then we'll pause together to breathe together. Yurisvati knows the power of a deep breath. We have pointed out the benefit of correct breathing before and much research has been devoted to the subject. One significant fact should be pointed out. In various fields of work, when feeling fatigued, people will interrupt their work or speech by taking a deep breath and thereby receive an influx of new energy. In most cases, they do this out of intuition without giving thought to the process. How greatly would the power of this process be increased if it were performed consciously? Remember that this rejuvenating breath is super mundane. For by it, man summons higher forces. He should understand that for greater effect, he should consciously turn to the super mundane world and affirm his inner light with the reservoir of beingness. Some workers, when pausing to take a deep breath, close their eyes. Their intuition is correct, for closing the eyes increases their concentration. We have already said that illumination can be instantaneous. Note also that a super mundane, super mundane breath is single, without repetition. This is significant, for only in a lone breath can be summoned the full power of energy. The thinker advised, understand the power of a super mundane breath. So I'll invite you all to close your eyes and in a moment you're going to take one rejuvenating breath. To do so, will consciously, you will consciously turn to the super mundane world and affirm your inner link with the reservoir of beingness from whence radiates the penetrating light of the heart. Now consciously turn 
to the super mundane world. And with one breath, affirm your inner link with the reservoir of beingness. Thank you. That great breath sustains the heartbeat of the path into the new civilization. Now back over to you, Alexander. Thank you very much. And now we move to Europe and uh, um, I'd like to introduce Mats Bronsted. Oh, Thank you. There is the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this invitation to share a few uh, notes on this very fabulous and fantastic gathering through the internet. I obviously misunderstood my task somewhat because I'm not going to talk about Europe at all, but uh, forgive me for not doing so. We are the guys who thought we ruled the world for the last past couple of thousand years or something like that. Okay, so what I want to share just briefly with you is uh, some impressions about what is some of the, or maybe one of the fundamental needs of humanity today. But I'd like to start with a more, a bit more positive note, which is that it seems that today more and more people all over the world, regardless of culture, religion, race and sex, seems to share values and intentions that lead towards more unity and synthesis within the human family. Uh, it probably has a lot to do with the global, global, uh, globalization because we are able to hear from an watch live uh, footage from all parts of the world uh, within sometimes only minutes after something occurs. So we feel more connected, I guess, with every parts of the world. And we relate uh, more and more to everyone around the world as brothers and sisters, as someone who share more with us than they separate from us or that they are, differ from us. I know when you're in the hotspot of the world, geopolitic hotspot of the world in the Middle East, you will probably not uh, feel the way that I, what I'm talking about now, but I would, I would suggest that if I'm pessimistic, if we are pessimistic, maybe around 20% and it's probably less of the world today works uh, with the intention, in, intention to create separatism. And if that's true, that would mean that at least 80% of us works to, towards creating more and more unity, more and more synthesis. So let's just go with that hypothesis for now. Well, if that's the case, why does the affairs of the world look uh, the way they do still. Uh, why are there so many fundamental needs that are not met um, in humanity but also in the environment, the other nature kingdoms? 
And it seems to me that there's a quite a big gap between the good intentions that so many of, many of us shares and the will to act on them persistently until we have created or realized the world which mirrors our intentions. So I, I would suggest that one of the biggest needs of humanity today is the will to see our good intentions through, the understanding that we are such a great number of people wanting fundamentally the same things that we have it in our power to create the world of equality, a world which is a wonderful place for everyone to live in. That's a practical possibility for us today, I would claim and suggest. So, following that stream of thought, which, are, which is mostly meditational impressions for the last couple of weeks, I'd like to take us on a very short visualization. So please get ready for another very short alignment. Let's start by sensing this webinar is a focal point for the heart-to-heart -heart connection between all parts of the world, the continents. Let's have a sense of all the lights popping up all around us, all wishing to share happy thoughts and peace with each other. Focused inwardly on the human family as a whole. Let's visualize a beam of clear light, pure life, pure will emanating from above into the heart of humanity. pouring into our hearts and minds. And thus fill us to, with the will to do good through our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And now I um, invite Jean Bates from Ohio, California in the United States. Thank you so much for inviting me. Sasha, I was really thrilled to come home from a most magnificent WASAC celebration here in Ojai at Meditation Mount. I got home about, or got to my bed about midnight, and I thought I should check my phone messages. 
So on my phone messages, I had a message from Kathy Newburn and from Sasha inviting me to represent North America in this webinar today. My goodness, what a tall order. So this morning, I got in touch with Sasha. I was actually surprised that maybe nobody else had um, been requested to join since I hadn't gotten back. But um, here I am. My home is in Hanover, New Hampshire, but I have been leading a bi-coastal life from New Hampshire to being in Ojai, and I have been very involved with the work of Meditation Mount for many years. I'm not an official representative of the Mount, but I am a longtime friend and co-worker of what's going on here. I wanted to share with you something that came to me from a seed thought in one of our daily meditations that we do every morning here at the Mount, and that is a seed thought that invited us to think about what would it be like if we were to begin our day and every encounter, every experience that we had by extending goodwill, of pouring forth the energy of goodwill. So this seed thought has had a tremendous impact on me. It was given to us by Ellen Hall, our director here at the Mount, and we have had a number of very, very powerful seed thoughts, including the idea of group endeavor. How could group endeavor also make a difference in what's happening in our own daily lives and indeed in the world affairs? So what I would like to do is to share with you a little bit about the idea of goodwill, and I would like us, at the end of a, a few things I'd like to share, I would like us to just ponder that with each other, particularly utilizing the energy that's coming in from WASAC. And uh, my goodness, I, I know, I think it was you, Judy, or Wendy, said that this has been a very, very powerful WASAC. Oh my goodness, it certainly has. Very powerful, very beautiful, and what's going on in this webinar today is an extension of that. And I'm so grateful that we're gathered together at this time of year in particular. So anyway, what I wanted to talk about is the idea that um, in Ojai, California, there is a special energy here. And I'm sure there are very special energy points in all of your regions as well. But this is one of ours, Ojai, California, one of our energy centers in the United States. And Ojai in particular is a special place because there are a number of spiritual centers here. We have, in addition to the Mount, we have Cortona Institute of Theosophy. We have the Krishnamurti Foundation of America. Ojai was one of Krishnamurti's favorite places, actually his supposedly his favorite place on the planet. We also have the, the Ojai Foundation, which was founded by Joan Halifax and um, celebrates our connections with the earth. We have um, celebrated here in Ojai the uh, tribe, um, the group of the Chumash, the Native Americans who were here in the beginning, and they, they still are participating in a great deal here. We have Mayor Baba's center called Mayor Mount, and we have many, many other centers in Ojai. And I think that speaks to the idea that there's a special energy here with people from different walks of life, different philosophies, different spiritual paths are all coming and working together. And I would like to share the fact that 
In the 1920s, the great theosophist Annie Besant happened to be on a hill overlooking this sacred valley. As she was overlooking the hill, uh, from her hill, from uh, the uh, one end of the valley, she looked out upon the valley and she had a very strong intuition that here in Ojai is the cradle of the new civilization. And as we're talking today about building the new civilizations, the work that's being done in Jerusalem um, as creating a center of peace there, I think the idea that we are all together creating a new civilization is very, very important. And I think a way that we can do that is by really emphasizing the laws and principles of goodwill and right human relations. I would like to invite you to take a moment with me to just have a moment of silence and ponder what can we as individuals who are involved in this particular path, as we are involved in preparing in the next 10 years, we don't have a lot of time, 10 years it is now, uh, before the 1925 um, externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ, all of these energies are going to be coming very, very soon, stronger and stronger. So let us take a moment, in a moment of silence, to just imagine how we contribute to that through right human relations and goodwill. Let us experience the powers of light at this Waysack full moon pouring into our hearts and minds, strengthening the hands of all those who are in the network of world servers, the new group of world servers. Let us imagine the power of goodwill. I think it was Roberto Wasajoli that used to say, goodwill is contagious. It spreads like wildfire. And I think we experience that in our own lives. Thank you so much. Best wishes to everyone. And let us move forward in our work with right human relations and goodwill at a focal point in our heart. Thank you. Namaskar. Over to you, Sasha. Thank you, Jean. And uh, now we moving to South America and I um, want to introduce Miguel Monde from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the group of Triangles and World Service Network. Miguel? Hello, good afternoon. Hello. I'm glad to give our contribution. Um, here from South America, with our thoughts and feelings and words for this planetary work. I'm very glad to be in this conference. I don't have 
not much to say, but I'm just viewing everything. Thank you, Miguel. I suggest to have a moment of silence tuning in with the great continent of South America. And now we open our microphone for impressions coming from uh, our circle. At the moment there are 93 participants, so for te technical reasons we are muted, everyone. But if you would like to speak, you could use the function of raising your hand. It's an icon on your control panel, so please use that if you want to share, and you will be unmuted. Okay, so uh, unmute M M Mark Abraham Lubovitz. Well, thank you all so much for creating and facilitating this glorious, wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, I'm sitting uh, at my computer in Sarasota, Florida, and over the last weeks, especially 
there have been many challenges that I've been facing uh, that put me in touch with my ego, with my personality. And my striving has been to step up to the plate of discipleship and ask, well, if I'm a disciple, how am I going to deal with this kick in the stomach or this betrayal or this great disappointment or my own uh, miscreations? And I'm now currently asking myself, how do I serve the best possible way? I am so much of a project person that I get swamped with desire to be of service and do projects. But I'm feeling now in the midst of this uh, challenging time that the initiation that I'm probably seeking really has much more to do, and my greatest service also has more to do with stillness and coming into more and more of my own wholeness. That's probably the, the greatest thing that I can do. Um, and I'm just feeling that very strong in the midst of many whole people. Uh, so thank you all for the clarity, and I thank you, God, for the, the challenge that helped me to step up to the plate. And that's it. Thank you, Mark. Also, if any of the panelists want to follow up on any ideas that you've heard from other panelists, you're welcome to share. Unmuted. Um, I'd like to say something. I don't know how I'm um, unmuted. Uh, this is Eliyahu again. And um, the African person, Karen, she talked about Ubuntu. And, um, and actually, I know that, that uh, it's a political movement not only in uh, South Africa, and uh, they, they have a, a leader named Michael Tellinger, and they talk about replacing the financial system. And, well, it sounds wonderful what I, when I've heard him speak about it, and I'm just wondering if when she spoke to Ubuntu, she was at all um, connecting with um, this political party and this man, uh, in her own mind, if she was connecting with the political party or Michael Tellinger. Thank you very much, you very for, much reaching out for reaching out about the comment on Ubuntu. Comment on Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu is, is an is African term, and it is it is about us being connected and seeing each other um, almost like the namaste, the God in me sees the God in you. That's really what it means. I do know of Michael Tellinger and I know of the movement of Ubuntu, the political party. He didn't win a seat here and um, it was very difficult for him, I believe, and I know that he's gone overseas and taken it, I think, to London, if I'm not mistaken. But no, my reference didn't come from, from that at all. I did want to add something else though, and that was that, um, and I think um, Judy, greetings and blessings to you, it's lovely to hear your voice again, um, uh, speaking about n not one religion that we'll move into in the, in the traditional sense, but in, in, the one, in the one religion in that we're more and more recognizing our unity through our diversity and the common, and the common um, will to right, right relations is coming through so much more and I just want to give credit to those who mentioned that and, and uh, acknowledging that that is indeed growing. Thank you.
Uh, hi, Uta, you are unmuted. Hello. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to say two things. One is that um, the way that this webinar is uh, organized, I think, is, is very good. You know, we have this challenge uh, to to learn how to um, communicate together through the internet, through these webinars. And I think this one, this uh, specific outline, specifically also because of the continents, is very uh, refreshing and also brings home in a very simple way the the you know, the planetariness of us moving into planetary consciousness. It's a great joy. And the other one is um, I, am, I was looking forward so much to the person from Saudi Arabia, Glenn Owen, and I think he's online, although probably without voice, as I have heard. That's why uh, we stepped in with the Jerusalem group to represent uh, Asia. So I just wanted to say hello to, to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Uta. Yes, indeed, we had reshuffling of the panelists because there was uh, some problems. We were, some of us were at the same conference and got uh, a virus, and so people were sick and lost their voices, and so it was some way a challenge to uh, replace and find people who would agree to step in at the last moment to the panel. So I'm really grateful for Jean and for Lia who uh, for stepping in and to Matt, Matt Bronstedt, thank you for doing this, joining this panel. And um, yes, and thank you Glim for being on this uh, webinar today. I don't know how you feel, if you feel better and if your voice is back, but if you have something to say, you can just raise your hand and we will unmute it. But few the ideas that we shared in Arizona, they came into this webinar and they've been voiced here. And so I hope they will find the continuation in our work too. And so if there are any other last comments, please. Otherwise, we would move to meditation. Alexander, could I just say something? Please, absolutely. Um, Thank you. I, I really I, I want to thank all the panelists and all the, the people who have commented so far. And the experience is quite strange. It's as though they're saying they're speaking from my my own heart. It's a it's a it's really wonderful, and I think it's something to do with the way you've organised the webinar. But I felt that the gentleman from Florida who spoke of his challenges as very real living ones seem to epitomize the essence of what we're experiencing at the individual level, at the continent level, at the global level. And I found that very moving um, because in a way when we talk about the penetrating light of the path, we have to remember we are the path and, it, and it's us. Um, that can breathe life and light into it. And I felt that he, he spoke so clearly of, um, of this challenge that reflects, you know, through everything we do. So I just wanted to say thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. And um, uh, there was a uh, glean uh, oven road on the chat, thank you, feeling better, still no voice, hello from Saudi Arabia. Um, I think I could put you in touch, Uta, with uh, Glyn and via email that you could have a direct communication. And I would unmute Rebecca and um, after that I think we would we could go for into meditation. Rebecca, welcome. 
Hello, hello, thank you. Um, thank you for the webinar. Um, just extending on what I'm in Australia and just extending on what um, Judy was just saying, I think um, those challenges of um, that were spoken about of coming in front of ourselves and um, having to make sacrifices as well um, are a really important part of the um, enactment of goodwill and in Australia here um, you know we had the meditation of Uluru and um, kind of the sacredness of our land and the energizing power of the continent that we're on um, and um, just um, for me thinking about um, some of the things that require um, an injection of goodwill in, in our country um, in terms of inclusiveness and peace that's been spoken about um, with Africa as well um, at the moment are the um, political moves to to close down some of our indigenous communities um, of people who have already been disenfranchised by um, the history of of what's happened here and also to um, detain refugees in in um, refugee centres um, and so I guess what I would like to put out there is um, when, when I think when you had the LIBRA webinar last year and you spoke um, people were speaking about um, a restorative justice um, and the, the beautiful idea came through of seeing light streaming into the parliaments and um, the, the places where these laws and everything are made um, and so I guess um, to, to include if people, particularly Australian listeners, feel that to include um, a a distribution of the light and um, a courage for goodwill that that does include sacrifice um, to flow through the population and the parliaments of our land to try and bring um, more inclusiveness um, in these areas. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And I suggest we now go into the meditation. And thank you, Wendy. Wendy Glaub is from Montreal, Canada for agreeing to lead us into this meditation. Thank you. Wendy, to you. Uh, Wendy, you are muted, so please unmute yourself. Yes, now, now you are on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before we begin this meditation, I would like to let you know that we will be using two different seed thoughts today. The first seed thought that we will use will be the astrological seed thought for Taurus, the penetrating light of the path. And the second will be the Taurus seed thought, I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. Let us begin our meditation with the alignment of the personality. Begin to breathe rhythmically, relaxing all aspects 
of the physical body. Become calm and serene emotionally. Allow the mind to become clear and focused. and center now in the heart center. From here, let us move our focus to the ajna, realizing that as we do this, we are becoming focused in mind consciousness. Visualize a triangle within the ajna and see each point of the triangle as an aspect of the personality bodies. The physical etheric body the astral emotional body and the mental body. And visualize these three bodies that form this triangle coming into an integrated focus within the Ajna. Sound a silent Om, realizing that these three aspects are now integrated into a unity aspiring to the soul. We lift up our awareness now to the soul. And we identify as soul. I am the soul. The soul am I. And as souls, we link now to the new group of world servers.
the link between humanity and the hierarchy. We lift our awareness now to the hierarchy. And to the Christ. And now we lift up to Shambhala, where the will of God for our planet is known. And together, we move into meditation on the astrological seed thought for Taurus. The penetrating light of the path. The penetrating light of the path. And now the Taurus seed thought, I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. 
I see. And when the eye is opened, all is illumined.
let us now visualize the invoked energies pouring down from Shambhala through the Buddha to the Christ through the hierarchy to the group of world servers to humanity and to all kingdoms of life on the planet. We see this energy meeting the needs of humanity, such as those needs shared by our panelists, the need for unification, the need for our economies to be lifted up from being exploited. The need for clean energy. the need for justice. The need for world peace. The need for religious reconciliation and brotherly coexistence. The need for ancient religious systems to soften and change. the need to strengthen the pulse of the heart to bring global unification. The need for humanity to open to true oneness the need to keep holding the goal of unity and synthesis. The need for the will to see our good intentions through. the need for conscious 
group endeavor, inspired by goodwill and right human relations. And we see this energy meeting the needs of all other invocations during this sacred time of Wisek. And together, let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. from the center, which we call the human race. Let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil 
dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, everyone. And as we enter the distribution phase of the Vesak Festival, let's keep our connection radiating the energy received by Christ from Buddha, distributing to all the needs of humanity. And from the Vesak festival till the Gemini festival, as it's called, the time of the spiritual tension, let's keep the spiritual tension, keeping the focus on this work of radiance.
and let's reconnect at the Gemini Solar Festival. Um, our webinar will be on May 31st with Nancy Seifer and Michael Winfield. We will ponder together on the communication aspect of our work, how we communicate the essence of the ageless wisdom to serve humanity in its current need. Thank you, everyone. Namaste.